All right, good morning, everyone. We are looking at the next uh, part of unit two, which is on parallel lines, perpendicular lines, and transversals. So this is section 3.3-2, parallel lines cut by transversals. All right, so first off, let's talk about what makes lines parallel. Now, for middle school, people remember parallel lines as two lines that never intersect. But more specifically, these lines must be coplanar. They have to be on the same surface in order for them to be considered parallel. So we have two sets of lines here that are in fact parallel. Let's talk about this picture for a second. Now, when we denote parallel, especially when there are several lines going on at one time, we use small little arrowheads so that you know which sets are parallel to each other. So in this case, we use just a little arrow on the body of the line. And again, they need to be matching up. So if the lines have two of those arrows each, that's telling you that those are your parallels. So in this case, line N and M are parallel. And we have a symbol for parallel, line M is parallel to it, and that is two vertical bars there. And that is our parallel symbol. Now, adding to that, once we have our two parallel lines, when I have a third line that intersects them, just like a road intersecting two other roads, we call that the transversal. So in this case, line T is the transversal because that is what's intersecting the other two lines. So like it says, it is a line, a segment, or even a ray that intersects two or more lines. And the clue there, two or more. There could be a third line that's parallel, that that one's crossing over. Now, what that transversal does is create a left side of the transversal and a right side of the transversal. But with the parallels, we get what's called the interior of the parallels, which is all of that space inside between the parallel lines. That is your interior. And we get what's called the exterior, which is the area outside the parallel lines, which is all of this space outside of those lines. So again, this is our exterior. And this is our exterior. While in between those parallels is the interior, okay? And that's very important because we're gonna start comparing intersections. We're gonna compare those four angles that are made on line M to those four angles made on line N. And when we compare, we wanna see, are they interiors? Are they between the two lines? Or are they exteriors outside? So that's gonna be very important. So let's take what we know now about interior versus exterior and your transversal and look at our first set of angles. So again, we are comparing that top intersection on line M to the bottom intersection on line N. And we get our first uh, angle name here, which are called corresponding angles. These are angles in the same position on each parallel line, clue there, each parallel line. I like to think about them as they're in matching spots. Okay, they're in matching positions. So there are several sets here of corresponding angles. So let's take a look at what we've got. So again, if I talk about angle two, I wanna talk about its location. I consider angle two to be on the exterior and to the right of the transversal. So I wanna find an angle that's in the exact same position on the transversal. So we're not necessarily gonna need the exterior part, because what I'm looking at is just this intersection. So I'm gonna consider that more 
in the top right corner of that intersection. And when I move to the bottom section, again, I want the top right, which becomes angle six. Those are a matching set of corresponding angles. So it's all about the positions. So let's kind of clean this up and sum this up here for a second, because there are four sets of corresponding angles. So we have angle two and angle six. And again, because they're in matching positions, if I take the size of that angle, it should line up perfectly in the exact same space in the matching position. So that makes it corresponding. So there is one set of our corresponding. So angle one, I'm sorry, not angle one, that was angle two, and angle six. We could also have one at angle one. It's in the top left, so that would match with angle five. So angles one and angle five. Let's keep working our way around here. I could have angle three, which is in the bottom left of that section, right up next to the orange angle, and angle seven. So angle three and angle seven. And then our last pair, whoops. Go. Angle four and make a prediction on the next one. Angle eight. Now I wanna say one thing about these angles as well, because look at the size of these angles. Angles two and six, were both acute angles, so they have to be the same size. But angles two and seven, I'm sorry, two and angle eight cannot be because two is acute and eight is obtuse. So they cannot uh, be the same size. They cannot be in the same positions. Now, one thing that is special about any kind of angles that are matching is they will be congruent meaning they will be the exact same size here, okay? So if I know, again, this is just an example. If I know angle two is 80 degrees, then I also know angle six is 80 degrees. If I know angle one is 100 degrees, then I also know automatically that angle five, matching position, is 100 degrees. So we can use that to see about the measurements of our different angles. All right, let's move right along. We have our next pair of angles, which are alternate interior. So for this case, alternate means that they are on opposite sides of the transversal. And interior, or inside the parallel lines. So they have to be on opposite sides of that transversal. So remember, they need to be on opposite sides of line T. Opposite sides of that line. So if one's on the right, the other's gotta be on the left. And inside the parallel lines, so in between lines M and N. So let's say we're looking at angle three. Okay, well right now on the transversal, angle three is on the left. So I need something on the right. And it has to be inside the parallel lines. Now it cannot be angle four because angles three and four have another name to them. Because remember, it's all about an angle from the top intersection and an angle from the bottom intersection. So I have angles three and six, there's one pair. And then notice if we go to the other side, what if I'm looking at angle four? Well, angle four is on the right side of the transversal. So it also matches up with five for alternate interiors. And like before, alternate interiors are congruent. They're gonna be the exact same size. So look at angle three, that was the first yellow one. 
that is an acute angle. And so is angle six. They are both acute. They are the same size. Similar idea for four and five. They are both obtuse. So kind of use that as just a backup check to see whether or not they're supposed to be equal. Now, on the flip side of that one, we also get alternate exteriors. Alternate again, meaning opposite of the transversal. Exterior this time for on the outside of the parallel lines. So again, let's label our, let's get our transversal up here so we can find it easily. So we need the opposite side of these of that transversal, but this time on the exterior. So remember the exterior is outside of the parallels, not in between them. So if I'm looking at angle one, angle one is left of the transversal. So I need to be on the right of the transversal. So that's either seven or eight. I'm sorry, that's either six or eight, but it has to be outside of the, of the parallels, which leaves us with eight. Because again, you're comparing from one intersection to the other. So angles one and angle eight. Let's see if we can find another pair. All right, so number two is also on the exterior and it's on the right side. So opposite of right is on the left. So that's either five or seven and it has to be on the exterior. So that means it's gotta be seven. So angle two and angle seven. And like its partner, alternate interiors, exteriors are also congruent. If I know one, I automatically know the other. Now our last two are a little different than the rest of them because these are not congruent angles. These are your consecutive, which means same side, and interior and exterior. So in this case, we have consecutive, which means they are on the same side of the transversal. So either both on the left or both on the right. And for again, interior inside the parallels. So if I'm on the inside of my parallels, let's say we look at number three. Okay, number th angle three is on the left side, so I need another one that's on the left side, which is either five or seven. And they have to be inside the parallels, which means we're looking at five. So angles three and angle five. All right, we have another pair. Let's say we look at angle six. Angle six is on the right side of my transversal. So the other option I have is angles two or four, but again, it's gotta be in between the parallels. So that leaves us with four. Okay, so just remember, same side as the transversal. But inside the parallel lines. Now these are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So again, that means supplementary. So these do not add up to 180. Okay, these do not add up to 180 because again, they are not the same size. Angle three, when we go back and look at the shape of that angle, it is acute. While angle five in this particular example is an obtuse. So again, they are different sizes and acute and an obtuse cannot be equal to each other because one's supposed to be smaller than 90 while the other one is bigger than 90. So they cannot be congruent. But again, they are supplementary. And our last set, consecutive for same side again of the transversal, but exterior outside the parallel lines. So let's say I'm looking at angle one this time. Okay. Angle one's in the exterior and it's on the left side of my transversal. Okay. 
And so if I go down to the other intersection, I need something on the same side, though that's five or seven, but again, it has to be on the exterior, which means I'm looking at angle seven. So we have angle one and seven. And then our last pair, this time let's start down at the bottom intersection with angle eight. And it is on the right side of my transversal. So go to the other intersection, that's either two or four, but it also has to be outside the parallels, which is angle two. So those are another set of consecutive exteriors. And like the previous ones, that means they need to add up to 180. Because for this example, angle eight is an obtuse, angle two is acute. So two different sizes, so they cannot be congruent for this example. Occasionally there are special times, special cases, where they all are congruent. And we'll look more at those um, on Monday. But I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about comparing your angles, again, from two different intersections. They cannot be at the same one. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions at all. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day today.